Hey y'all, welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. Today I wanted to do something a little different, uh, and and we're going to spend some time, I promised y'all down here at TP, uh, doing some things. I want to build a camp, me and Brody can enjoy, come down here and play, it's real close to the house. Um, but today, I want to build the Nesmuk Fire Range, uh, the Cook Range, um, I've, I've not seen really any copies of it on YouTube. I, I searched it. Nobody has authentically created it like he described it in his book. And uh, I went back and I reread his book. In fact, I listened to it. I listened to a lot of books while I'm making pottery. But after I finished this Nesmuk knife, and uh, I don't really know exactly what his knife looked like. There's some drawings. There's a general design. And I think it would be something similar to this. I don't know if it is, but this is out of some fairly thick steel. Uh, my buddy Don Lanier gave me this blank. He had partially ground it. And I, I took it and, and finished it and handled it. Finished. I really basically reground it. Um, I think the way Nesmuk described his, it had a lot finer grind. So, uh, I, you know, I don't really know. But anyway, in the spirit of that knife, I decided to, uh, I wanted to build the Nesmuk Fire Range. Uh, because fire is something you see 10 hundred different ways to build fire. I hadn't done a lot on this. Uh, it's not really dry here. Everything's really wet. But I wanted to build a cook range. Now, we're going to do a lot of cooking inside the TP eventually and camping out in it. But it's not, it's hard to get real footage in there. So we're going to come out here in the front. And we're going to attempt to re recreate what he described in his book. Um, now, when I go, I brought two different cutting tools with me because he described an 8-inch log. Well, I wanted a little bit better axe to cut this. Um, I didn't want to do it with a chainsaw for the authenticity. Uh, yeah, I could have brought a chainsaw down here. And I don't have hemlock like he described here. Not on this property. Um, but now, my, my main... If I'm going to backpack and do like Ness did, he carried a double bit axe. Uh, most of y'all know, probably know more about the book than I do. But this is my tool of choice as far as a, a camp axe uh, is a tomahawk. And it's just, I, I just like the tomahawk. I'm probably going to build some better ones. This, is, this one is probably not ideal, but it is a good one. And it would do everything that I want to do. Uh, I see a lot of guys toting a saw, y'all. I've, I've, I've tried a saw. I have made a pack saw. I, I'm just not a fan of a saw. It just, I don't know. I find that I can do more with an axe. I want, I want my tools to have multiple purposes. I can cut with this tool. I can pound stakes in. I can drive forking sticks in the ground. I can, there's just a lot of hammering and, and batoning and clubbing and whatever. I can handle all of that with this. And I don't have to beat on my knife. If you start sawing stuff into, you got to beat on your knife to split it. It just makes more sense to carry an axe. So I wouldn't carry both of these. I brought this big one down here. This is my trapping axe. This stays on my buggy, but I rode down here in the buggy. So let's get started. Enough talking. Let's build this fire. Okay, so what I've picked out right here, this is approximately about eight inches in diameter. So we're gonna fail this tree. Uh, this is a sweet gum. This is not the ideal tree to probably use to cook on. What I have an abundance of here is, and you see behind me, is pine and sweet gum. There's a little bit of maple, a uh, few straggly oaks. Uh, but the, what I would wanna cull out of here is this sweet gum and it won't hurt nothing. So I'm going to cut this tree. We're going to cut it with an ax. We're going to get us two four foot sections out of it. And that's what we're going to start with. I got carried away. Didn't cut the camera back on to catch it falling. But it's hung up, so we're not done yet. Alright, he said about 
about four foot in length. That's right there. We'll mark another four foot. And I'm giving a little space in between my feet. Oh. mention when you're cutting straight down like this spread your feet out where if you miss you don't come down and split your shin bone Our two sections cut in two. The next order of business is to flatten the tops of both of them. Uh, the next thing I want to mention, the benefit of an axe over a saw. Well, the saw, you're going to get fine sawdust powder. These are damp. But these faggots of wood all these chips can be picked up, put in a hat, a bag. Once you get a fire going, this damp green wood in chips like this, you put all in there to make more coals is what is great to cook over. Uh, it would be ideal if it was hickory, something like that, but this will work. As long as it is not a pine, I don't want to cook over pine because of all the heavy, heavy, heavy resins. However, this sweet gun, sweet, Y'all, I'm tuck it out. Using an axe is a lot of work and that's what deters a lot of people. Uh, but this sweet gum does have a lot of resins in it, but they're not really harmful. Uh, and today we're gonna make coffee. So we're not gonna really be cooking over an open flame. So it's not gonna make a lot of difference we after the heat. So let's get this up there, start getting them put together. Next thing we're looking for out of the tree that we cut down is some pork sticks. I really like this one, so I'm going to cut it off. I don't know how much I need. I'm going to cut it long. You want it pointed, where you can drive it in the ground. I'm going to try to get it over here where I can use... use the tree as an anvil to don't have to cut that limb off. Alright. There's one, you need two of them. We could probably get it Right there out of that, but I think I see a heavier one up there. First thing I want to do is start leveling this.
throw all these pieces of wood that we just chipped off back in our fire pit. It'll make excellent coals. Okay, in building a fire, I got all kind of dead twigs here and pop. Anything laying up off the ground is what I'm looking for. I don't need to go cutting firewood. Uh, as far as building a fire, building that fire range, you need to actually do a lot of work. But that is that is meant to last you. If you're gonna come back to an area and keep using that, that is what that's for. If you're on the move and you're not stopping, you're just gonna stop and cook and that's it. You don't really need to go through all that trouble to build this as fancy as I'm building this one. Uh, but building a fire, you really don't need anything but your hands and a lighter. Uh, I'm picking up stuff and y'all, it is wet. The ground is soggy. My knees from just kneeling down are wet. Uh, so you, what you're looking for is any of this stuff that's up off the ground. This is, this is all the firewood that you need. So I'm pulling this stuff out. We're gonna go get it laid into our fire pit and uh, see if we can get us a fire built and get the rest of it going. Alright, now with this, I'm probably going to build this a little different than the way some of them experts have taught you. We're going to lay a bunch of these bigger sticks down in here in the bottom. Uh, because our ground is kind of damp and we put some, we got a bed of those faggots I call them. That is what Nesma described them as. Uh, so I'm going to keep gathering some more wood. Then we're going to get us a layer of some dry grass and put sticks back on top of it. Gonna lay that grass right in there. Okay. We got us a bunch of small tender-like stuff. We're gonna just lay it all along our fire right here. Now let's see how much trouble we have getting the fire going. I'm hoping it'll burn from one end to the other one. I may not have enough grass. Some of this grass is going to be damp. You can start it at both ends probably. While that is catching up, I want to work on my top part. I better use it.
All right, guys. Just like that, you've got your Nesmuk fire range. You can beautify this any way you want to. Uh, I'm gonna close mine in a little bit. Now I down here have a cook grate, but this, I'm gonna have to get it a little bit closer together. Well, it wants to keep rolling back. Put that up against it and it won't. Now, to see I've got a place to set my coffee. It Ideally, it needs to be a little bit more together. And every time you move one end, the other end wants to move, but y'all, that is easily repaired like that right there and see you've got level service set big old skillets everything down through here And those coals is all you need to cook on. You start putting your pieces of wood in here as you want. Y'all, just like that, it's just that easy to build one of these fire ranges. Uh, this is more for a permanent camp, I would say, or at least for a several day stay. If you're gonna be there three or four days in one spot, this is worth investing. If you're ultralight backpacking and you're stopping, this is probably not the route for you. Um, this is more camping and not really bushcraft this is woodsmanship i would say um you could do this without cutting anything you can walk around and find you two good logs and lay them side by side and and accomplish this for me this pot don't have a bale on it i really don't need this pole up here i wanted to construct it for those of you that are going to use it for something uh i pulled off a couple of pieces of string I, uh, I have some tarred bank line right here. You could tie this over here uh, in any manner you want and put you a toggle on it. Any kind of knot that you prefer. There's a thousand different knots to use. Don't mean one's better than another one. Uh, but you can put a toggle on there and hang about whatever you want to hang. Uh, forked sticks, just for an instance just because this one is laying right here. You can lash you a piece onto there where you can hang that stick up right there. Or you can tie you a string onto there where you can tie that hanging right there. But basically all you're wanting to do right here is get you a bed of coals in there. 
Uh, you don't need no huge open fire flames boiling to, to do your cooking. In fact, Nesma talked about that in his book about uh, melting the lids off your coffee pots and such as that. It don't take a bonfire to cook. And obviously the smoke right there is going to get in my face. And this is a piece of lighter pine that I've got. I picked up over there to make me a fire poker. Um, so anyway, I've got my coffee in there. That is a percolator pot. I brought it with the coffee. You just put the grain straight over in the little compartment on the top. And it'll once it gets to a certain temperature, when those flames are good right there under, it'll start percolating and it won't take it long and you'll have coffee. So anyway, I just wanted to uh, come down here, show y'all the Nesmuk fire range. Uh, I, I seen one guy that attempted to make it and, and what he did work, but he greatly struggled with it. He dug a hole under it. It was getting way too much air. Uh, you don't want no roaring flame to cook over. Uh, a lot of people miss that. All you need is some hot coals. That's what you want to cook. I love a good bonfire, don't get me wrong. I am the world's worst. When I sit back after I'm through eating, I like to pile wood on a fire and I like to watch the flames. That is the enjoyment for me. Build you a bonfire, but don't use it to cook over. Find you some easy way to cook. Cook your meal, then sit back, roll the logs out of the way if you want to, and build you a bonfire. So you'll see this range stay here. Uh, we're going to come up with some ways cooking, hanging pots up here on this. Uh, you'll see it used some more. I want to do some cooking recipes down here, some wild game cooking, whatever, fish. I don't know what all we're going to do. But anyway, thank you all for watching Spirit of the Outdoors. We'll see you next time. Remember, the best way to do things is the way you like to do it. <laughs>